All right, I hope you're ready to learn about 10 crucial mistakes that you are probably making while grocery shopping. And by doing and avoiding, by avoiding these 10 mistakes, you're gonna save thousands during the year because I have seen it with our own budget. So I'm really excited that you're here. Number one, and I'm leading with this one, not just because I have a grocery price book that you all need, or you can make your own, but this is fantastic. But I have to start here because it sets you up for all the other tips I have for you is you need to compare prices. I'm going to start this right out the gate because this is where you're going to save the most. I have done this since I started couponing years ago when like the couponing craze was going on. And I, this is how I really learned to shop and notice where I was making mistakes um, because it's always fun to get something for free or for half off, especially when like the store is doing double coupons, right? You, there is a high to shopping and even with grocery shopping, trust. So I noticed that while I was couponing, um, I would start to see in, in price things at other stores. And then I noticed the mic, like, wait a minute. Yes, I got a good deal with the coupon, but at the other stores, these were their sales or this is their base price that if I wasn't couponing, I might get a better deal at the other store. But yes, you could save money couponing, but if you're not into that like at all, like with paper coupons and things, you need to know the base prices of the stores in your area. So figure out, and if you haven't already, which I'm sure you have, you guys are like savvy, savvy shoppers. I see your comments in, in, I read every comment from you guys and you guys are savvy shoppers. I've seen that. And I have noticed that, uh, when you go to the store, um, keep, keep an eye on their regular prices. Don't study sale prices, guys. Like when you are, you've got your grocery ads, uh, these are great, study them. Um, but you want to track base prices. This helps you know if a sale is a sale. So, all right. So if you're keeping track, you could do this on your phone. You could do this in a notebook. You can create your own notebook, but we have the no before you go grocery price book. So what you're going to do is you could do this while you're at the store if you have time, but a lot of us are busy, right? You, you don't have time to track while you're in the store. What you're going to do is start taking your receipts, okay? Keep them in your book and you're going to track your go-to items. You're not going to track like every item that you're interested in, right? What are your go-to items that you buy all the time? Like you, it's like sometimes when you go to the store without a list, which is one of the mistakes, is that you just start like tossing things in the cart because it's just automatic, right? So you're, you're tracking the base prices, but in our grocery price book, you're able in sections to track the store brand, the generic brand, the, um, the name brands. And then that way you can see what, and compare it to the other stores. Um, by doing this, you're really going to know if your go-to store, we all have that store we love going to. It's like, where, where they're like ride or dies. This helps you see if you're getting a great deal at that store. And let me tell you, my friends, stores I thought I was getting a good deal in, like, uh-uh, nope, not at all. So I learned in my area the lowest to highest store, but I've also learned by tracking their uh, no, normal prices, I'm always looking at the normal prices, but seeing when they have a sale i know which stores when they have a sale they're good and i know which stores when they have a sale it's a total gimmick so i know i'm going to pass over here or i'm going to go over there so right now our grocery price books they're on sale we're having a mother's day sale for 25 percent off you guys 25 and derek is going to leave a link in the comments for you guys um this right here is going to save you so much time. Like guys, I've, I have done this for years and I have saved so much money, thousands of dollars, no joke by tracking. 
Okay. Um, so that's your number one tip because it's going to lead into every tip here. Okay. So mistake number two that you're not doing is you're not buying seasonal produce. Now I love certain vegetables and I love certain fruits, but they are way too high during certain times of the year. And I literally just gasp like avocados certain times of the year. I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. Strawberries. Oh my gosh. Have you seen the prices? But, um, so you're going to track what's in season. I'm actually making a video. You're going to probably see it next week. Actually, I was just filming in the grocery store the, last week and people were looking at me like, why is this lady recording the vegetables? Like, I was like, hi, sorry. I, I try not to get in anyone's way. I wait. And then I'm all, Brr. people just go, I get curious people that go, excuse me, like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm just working. Do you work for the store? No. <laughs> so buy what's in season. That way you can bring it home and you can prepare it. It's the best prices. Um, you're getting very, very good prices when it's in season. Um, in fact, a lot of the times when you're buying it in season, you're more than likely buying from local farmers if you're in an area of the country where that thing is product is grown. So, um, <laughs> so it's best to buy them in season. So I have that video coming up for you. What's in season, but like, seriously go on Pinterest. You can like see month by month. I thought I had this sheet here next to me. Um, what's on sale. What's on, uh, this month. I know right now that, um, starting now and through like june july um artichokes are in season and i love artichokes we don't have them all the time during the year because they're so expensive so i know artichokes is one of them uh beets if you like beets they're in season um but what you're going to do is when you purchase it in season, you can come home and prepare it. You can freeze these items. If you're not sure what to freeze, uh, later I'll add a link in at the description of 40 things that freeze well. You could pretty much freeze anything, you guys. Uh, you could freeze dry a ton. You can dehydrate a ton. But make use of your freezer, you guys, with all the seasonal produce. When mango is in season, who doesn't love mango, right? get that in your freezer that freezes up beautifully um, and that way you can use it later in the year especially during the holiday season when you want to make your favorite desserts and things and you don't want to have to go buy something and pay an insane insane price so uh your berries freeze up beautifully spinach does um, you can even take and make fruit packs um, but take advantage of seasonal produce and, and knowing when so look out for that video I'm excited to bring that to you. Okay, so then my number third mistake, that's three, that you're doing where you're missing out on savings and spending too much money is just only shopping the perimeter. Yes, shop the perimeter. Absolutely. You're getting your, all your veggies. Usually in most grocery stores, they're set up to where you walk in and there's flowers. Have you ever noticed that? There's flowers in front of the store and that's there to create like smell for you. Usually the bakery's in the front. It gets the smells going. Uh, sometimes the deli will be on the side, but right in the front. Uh, and then you're starting to smell like the rotisserie chickens and oh my gosh, don't go to the store hungry. That's another mistake. Just don't. Uh, but they attract you with the flowers and then all the smells. And then up front is the produce, okay? So yes, load your cart with the produce, absolutely. But yes, you shop the perimeter. That's where you're getting your meats and your uh, dairies and your cheeses and your butters, of course. But if you only shop the perimeters, you're missing out on what's happening in the aisles. Another mistake that people just seem to ignore is they think that the middle aisles are just all produce food. Yes, there's lots of produce in those aisles, but in those aisles, there are, you know, grains, there's oats, there's, um, 
beans, dried beans. So you're missing out if you're just ignoring um, the middle. I save so much money when comparing prices by, you know, keeping track, okay? And, um, and then going into the middle. Sometimes the best times to go into the aisles is when the stores are running their sales, okay? Especially when it's that time of year where the big, big, big sales are happening, okay? What's coming up right now in America is Memorial Day, okay? This is when I stock up for the summer, okay? You can get your salad dressings, your marinades, um, your barbecue sauces. Uh, oh my gosh, let's see, what else? Uh, you can even go over to the non-foods in the paper good aisles. You're going to get paper plates and cups and cutlery, especially if you do a lot of outside like entertaining. You're going to save a lot. Right now, I just noticed in the ads, the stores are just starting to uh, start to get competitive with that stuff. But I don't need to buy any cutlery. I just bought uh, spoons and forks at Sam's Club. I recently did a haul video for you guys, what's happening at Sam's Club. And that deal on the big 600 box count was so good. I'll get into that more in just a little bit. Um, so you want to see there what's happening with the sales and shop that perimeter. Okay. Or the, in the aisles. Another mistake is not reading the banners on the aisle signs like the menu of what's down those aisles don't go down an aisle that you for sure know your items not in just to like go down it and go around like if you can stay away from the chip and the cookie aisle go for that because that's all stuff that you can make homemade uh, coming up, I am filming how to make things homemade and not buy it. You guys, simple, simple, simple things that you already have in your pantry. Remember when I talked about that we have to start to get uncomfortable? You need to start to get uncomfortable and start learning to do things to save. And everything tastes so much better at home. I made for my son a few weeks ago these homemade crumble cookies. Now, there, crumble is a huge cookie place here in Utah. I know they're like starting to spread out across the country. If you've ever eaten at Crumble Cookie and just absolutely loved it, hit the thumbs up button. They're so good. But one, they're super spendy. I think they're super spendy, but they're so good. Big, chunky, yummy, warm cookies. I learned how to make a mock version of it, right? I don't know. That recipe, I don't know if, where I found it, if someone like stole it from Crumble because it tasted just like Crumble. Um, and it was so good. Even looked like there's a certain way that you're supposed to put the dough together. You're supposed to roll it into a ball, pull it apart, and then put the flat or the round edge over the part you pulled apart so it sticks up and you get that cool look to, oh my gosh, I'll be sharing that. Homemade is better and it's more affordable. So I'll be sharing that with you. Um, so you're going to check inside the aisles and grab your items. And this is where you're watching the prices and comparing, but this is where you're going to start to buy in bulk. I get asked all the time how to buy in bulk, or we don't have case lot sales where we are. I'm in Utah. I share case lot sales. It's a Utah, Idaho. I'm not sure if parts of Colorado do, but here's the thing. If you've watched a recent video that I did on bulk shop shopping. I'll leave it below when we're done. Um, not all big bulk shoppings are worth it. This is where you have to look at the prices and keep track. Okay. Because this is where they get you. So when there is a sale, this is when you're going to stock up Buy one for now, two for later, maybe create another little grocery budget where you put so many dollars away a week or a month where you can buy things that are on sale in bulk. This is how I built my big food storage room. Um, and over the years, it just grew and grew and grew. Um, and this is how we did it. So number one is, or the other tip is thinking buying in bulk is not for you. Huge mistake. 
you will save so much money when you buy in bulk. And this is when you're going to start looking at the unit price of things. Okay. This is where you're going to compare the unit price of a bag uh, compared to another bag of the same size and another store or like size. Because I noticed like Costco will have their big bag, 25 pound bag of pinto beans. Walmart doesn't sell 25 pound bags of pinto beans. Um, but I will look at what the unit price is on a pound for them compared to the unit price that's at the bulk store. And then I'll, I'll do a comparison. So sometimes buying that big bag in bulk at the bulk store is a good deal. Or sometimes buying it smaller is the deal. So you just have to compare the unit price. I know a lot of people get confused on it, but I used to think that was like not a big deal when I was starting this whole process of like tracking and looking. Now I'm constantly looking at that unit price as well. So in our know before you go grocery price book, there is actually a, a spot where you can put the price and the unit price for you to keep track. So if you've create your own price book, make sure that you add the unit price. So we have like 36 sections, I believe in there of all categories that you could track in the grocery store, you guys. I mean, 30 something sections. I mentioned it on the website. So you can see here you have space for four stores and then the category and the brands. Um, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm, I'm telling you, I made sure that I could think of like almost every category that you could track and you're going to use a pencil because you're going to scratch out. Now you don't track them every week. Okay. You could do this once a month. You could do this quarterly. You could do it, you know, six months out of the year. The whole point is to know. So when you are at another store or comparing the ads and you see a sale, you're going to see if that sale is better than anyone's base price. And if it's not, the sale is not a sale. And that's where they get you. Okay. Especially if a store uh, that's normally high priced. Um, okay. Let's a good example in the video I did on the bulk shopping when I got my big case lot sale, their prices, their base prices are so much higher than like the other stores in my area. So when they had that sale and you didn't have to buy them in bulk, you could buy one or two. Um, but they just put them in cases for you to buy in bulk. Um, their sale prices weren't great. In fact, they matched Walmart's regular prices. So there was things that I needed now that I did buy. And there was things I just completely ignored and said, nope, you're not coming home with me. I could grab that at Walmart. Or I'm going to wait to a certain part of the year when it's really on sale and I could stock up. In fact, the one, the one time of year I really and like stocking up is the start of the holidays, starting at Thanksgiving through the holidays. Oh, November, I am stocking my pantry. That is the best time to stock up. The prices are so good. Even last year with inflation, they were still the best. And then after the holiday season, not another mistake is not going into the stores or looking at the ads and seeing what they're putting that season of stuff on clearance or they will run sales and sometimes they don't even promote sales. I went into Smith's and they were promoting like stuffing and, oh, okay. They were, they didn't promote like in the ad, but in the store, they were promoting canned pumpkin. That pumpkin that the expiration date was like two years from now. And I do have a video down below where you can really learn about the best buy dates, sell, sell, sell by dates and expiration dates. You could go so long on these items. That video is for you down below. So they were selling the big, uh, is it 28 or 32 ounce cans of pumpkin for a dollar, a dollar. You couldn't even get that price during the Thanksgiving sales, not one bit. And so I noticed what I had in my budget for the rest of the month for grocery shopping. And I was like, mm-hmm. I threw quite a bit in my cart. And uh, so now they're on my shelf. And technically, I don't have to buy any canned pumpkin during the holiday season. I really don't have to. 
Um, but I like to have it on my shelf all year round. So during the Thanksgiving season, I'll compare prices, figure out with my menus how much I'm going to actually go through of it, and then grab a few more to put on my shelf. But if Smith does that again, maybe I won't buy any. And if they do it again, stock up then. So this is where, you know, being vigilant is just so, so important. Okay. I have so many tips for you. Okay. Again, a reminder, the grocery price book is on sale. We are running a Mother's Day sale. It's 25% off, you guys. I I'm dying for you to get your hands on it. I already noticed um, in the comments of some videos, you guys have been telling me that you already purchased it, that you've uh, already got it. Please, in the comments here, tell me what you think of it. Like, honestly, good, bad, ugly. But let me tell you, this is so good. I This is my brain. I designed it the way that I had it on my computer. So every time I got home from the store, had a receipt, I would put it into the computer and... Melinda, my awesome graphic designer, put my brain down to paper and you're not going to be disappointed. There are so many categories, you guys. You're going to save tons of money by tracking your grocery prices. So, okay, next one um, is ignoring the bulk stores. Like you might have a membership to a bulk store and you occasionally go or you don't have a membership to a bookstore because the, you know it's overly priced or you end up spending too much going there. Okay, yes, it's very hard to go in and get what you need and then come out with, you know, everything. I, I get it, like I get it. But man, if you have bulk memberships, you can be saving a ton. Okay, for instance, I buy my romaine lettuce at Costco and Sam's Club. I don't buy it from the normal grocery store. It's way too expensive at the normal grocery store. I get more heads at the bulk store. So I save there. Sometimes, sometimes, because I have to look at what I'm tracking, I can buy my green peppers, my green bell peppers in bulk at Sam's Club cheaper than I can at any of the grocery stores. It depends on what's happening. It depends on the time of year. Okay. And I like to buy my green peppers at Sam's club. They sell them in bulk there. And that way I can, there's six peppers that come in a package. Now they could go quick, you know, before you use them, or you can prepare them correctly and store them correctly in your refrigerator. That video is coming up. Um, and, or you could freeze them. Or you can come home and make some make-ahead meals and throw them in and get those into your freezer. So, um, so definitely don't discard the bulk stores. I have, I have gotten way more savings there sometimes versus the grocery store. Um, I actually spoke to one of the regional managers of Costco years and years and years ago, and he was telling me that um, their store brand. Uh, like corn and green beans, they picked the fields that they were getting them from. They picked where they want their, their crop located, like the best watering, all of it. And so if you ever open up a can of like Kirkland corn versus a name brand corn or a store brand or generic corn, you're going to see a huge difference in the kernels. And I couldn't believe it. And I, I tested it out when I got home. I'm like, it's so true. Um, I've been noticing that with this whole egg debacle, that it was cheaper to buy eggs at the bulk store. So uh, we do have chickens, but I go through a lot of eggs with meal prep and videos, and it was cheaper most of the time to get it at the bulk store. So, okay. Um, Another thing that you're making a huge mistake is overlooking the food labels on your purchases. You guys, these manufacturers, these brands, they know a good gimmick. They know how to get you with the word non-GMO, uh, organic, um, 
you guys, read the labels. Most of the time, it's the same things that are on the generic can store brand cans. Read the labels because you could be spending way more money than you have to. Uh, a lot of the times the generic brand or store brand is made by the same producer. Okay. But I noticed though, that some name brand items like, okay, say the cereal aisle, read the back of the box. I noticed that a lot of the store brand or generic brand cereal won't have a certain chemical in it that's in the others. There's a chemical uh, BHT. It helps store freshness of the cereal and it leads to cancer. Um, so I look on the back and I'm looking for that BHT. There's another one like T. If, if you can leave it in the comments, there's another one um, that's also on the box. I look and see and I, I will get that over the name brand, even if the price is good. There's a time, like, where's your line? Where do you draw the line for savings? Like, what will you pay full price for or not be able to get a discount for? Like, we all have that line. You just need to know where it is. So there's sometimes I don't mind paying full price because I know either the quality is good or uh, I'd rather support this over here than this over there, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's a big mistake, not looking at the food labels. Um, okay, number nine, big mistake. Okay, thank you, Sharon. She posted what that other, that other one is. Thank you. Okay, so the next big, big mistake you're making is not taking inventory. You guys, you need to know what's in your pantry. You need to know what's lurking in the back of your freezer. <laughs> what is in your refrigerator before you head to the grocery store, okay? Search your refrigerator. What do you have in there that you can move down to the freezer before it spoils? By ignoring what's going on and taking inventory every week, you're wasting dollars. You might as well just throw the money in the trash. Now, I know things can spoil and go bad. I get that. It happens to us, but it ticks me off. Huh, Derek? I seriously get angry when I'm like, no, 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 no. Oh, so you've got to be in, in your pantry, in your refrigerator, in your freezer, and knowing what's in there. Uh, that's where you're going to shop from first. So you're going to shop your shelves before you shop the stores. This is, besides comparing prices, probably the number one tip that you need, 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 need to do. Okay. Because how many times have you come home and you've had doubles or, um, I, I you know what I can't stand? I'll tell you right now I can't stand. I can't stand when stores have the same container that looks like another container of something like one store I shop at the cottage cheese container looks very close and very similar uh, to the sour cream. The sour cream and cottage cheese look like each other. Oh my gosh. I thought I had in my mind's eye, I was at the store. I'm like, oh yeah, we've got cottage cheese and I bought another sour cream. I came home and I had a big container of sour cream. Oh my gosh. So do your inventory. It <clears throat> because then you got to come home and you got to work your menu. That's another mistake. Not having a menu, not having a game plan. Okay. This is where it gets crucial. Okay. Crucial. I just did a poll on my community tab on YouTube asking you guys, um, about work. I wanted to get to know you more. I didn't add an option of, I should have, but I was thought of doing another post. So I'm, I had another post in mind and I didn't do it. Here's what it was. Okay. I pulled this earlier today. It had 2.1 K votes. I asked you if you work outside the home with no children or worked from home with no children or worked outside the home with children, or you worked from home with children. I wanted to get a pulse on you guys. And the majority was that you do work outside the home with children, okay? 
And the next highest was working outside the home with no children. Um, I wanted to see where you guys were at because these tips that I'm giving to you are so important when you're not um, in the pulse of your kitchen all the time. When you are driving home from work and you're going to stop at the grocery store to get dinner. Okay. How, how much is like... You stop at the store and you're going to grab a rotisserie chicken. Okay, so rotisserie chickens, depending on the store and depending on what time of day, I know that uh, Costco is $4.99 for a rotisserie chicken, but if you're not stopping at Costco, you're stopping at the grocery store, those in my area can go anywhere, gosh, 6 to $10, um, where you could go and instead of grabbing that chicken, you could have used your grocery budget and had gone grocery shopping and bought a whole chicken in the uh, chicken area and got a twin pack or just bought one for like, depends, maybe $1.37 a pound. And you could have had that in the slow cooker or had someone start it for you, uh, put it in the oven. You could have prepared it the night before, throw it in the oven. So I'm going to be doing a video on some tips to help you working mamas inside the home and outside the home. Um, because I know how hard it is to work and in finding that time. You know, I always think, gosh, it really is a blessing that I get to do what I do and work inside the home. But it's hard. I, 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 sometimes I'm like, man, maybe I should work outside the home because I could leave work at work. You know what I'm saying? But it's hard even in the home and seeing my slow cooker, seeing the food. Sometimes it's hard on dates that I'm not prepared, that I haven't had a game plan, that I haven't menu planned, um, that I haven't shot my shelves and seen what's going on to get dinner on the table. It's hard when you are on vacation to get back into the swing of things. It's hard, even if you're a stay-at-home mom and you have kids at home, finding the time when you're not being pulled in every direction. It's so hard. Um, I get that. There's weeks where I'm on my game and there's weeks where I am not. Um, but knowing what you have makes a world of difference when you want to go to the grocery store. Okay. Keep track. And in fact, in the, uh, we sell, she's in our apron planners. So a lot of you are still wanting the yearly planner, which I find very interesting since it's May. Um, so we, even though I know a lot of people still like to buy the yearly planner, even if they're not using the first four months, um, we decided for Mother's Day to put this for 25% off. So if you still want a yearly we're giving you a Mother's Day sale, a discount, 25% right now on the yearly planner. Because I know a lot of you, um, you were saying that you like to go back and write it and, and use it as a uh, journal. So right now, if you would like the big yearly planner for 2023, it's 25% off. But um, right now, you can still get the May through August semester planner. So... Um, Ugh. So you could grab it in a semester form so you don't have the big guy. But in here, I have a whole section on shopping your shelves, help you keep track of what you got going on in your pantry, your freezer, your refrigerator. And then there's a section on freezer meals. So you could track what you need to use up. I love this section. I love this section. So what I do is I'll go into my refrigerator periodically during the month. And I'll go in and see what we got going on in there, right? That we need to use up something got tossed behind or shoved in the drawer. And I'll write in here what that item is, how much of it that I have. And then I look and see like, okay, what meals can I make with this? Okay. And then I, on this page, the next page is a menu plan. And then I'll write down the menu. And then there's a shopping list here. And then I'll make my shopping list. Then what I do is I start looking at the store ads. Okay, I go onto the computer and I check out my store ads. Or if, if you have the mailers, great. Sometimes they come to my house, but lately they've been missing us. So I have to go online and pull up the flyer. So, um, and then I start looking at the sales. The best deals are usually the front of the ad, the 
And this is another crucial mistake people are making is not checking out the store ads. Okay, they put a lot of prime things right in the front and usually the next page or any fold. Sometimes they'll do a fold um, and it'll look like, I think I printed it out. Like they'll have a little fold section like this that'll fold over. You want to check this out. This is where they're doing a ton of their deals, their sales. So what you're going to do is you're going to check out the sale. Okay. So I know right now I didn't print it up. This is next week's Smith's ad. Um, right now though, like tonight I'm going to the store. They have butter for $2.99. What? So I am going to go grab some more butter. Um, but to get that deal, you have to read the print. When you're at the store or when you're looking at the flyers, you need to look at the print, the final word of what's happening in the sale. Because there's been times where people I have seen put lots of things on the belt because they're like, oh, ooh, butter, $2.99. But what the ad said was with the in-store digital coupon. So you can go to the store and they'll have um, on a lot of items that are part of that digital coupon. You can scan their digital coupon on your phone. It'll bring you to their app or online. Um, register for all your store's uh, accounts. Um, and you could hit clip coupon. So then it's on your loyalty card number. So you don't have to think about it again. Once you clip it, you go up to the register with your item and you can, um, it'll come right off. You put in your loyalty number and it'll come right off for you guys. But it does say like how many times you can use it. And usually it's, you could use up to five times. So I'm going to get five pounds of butter for $2.99. Holy cow. So, um, and I already know that that's a good deal because no one, no one's got their base price at $2.99. Nobody. I already know that. Once you start doing this, you get like accustomed, like, you know, like, you know, very quickly, like, nope, nope, that's not a good deal. I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. I'm telling you, sometimes I don't even have to look at it. $2.99. Yeah, I know. No one's got a base price of $2.99. So that sale is really good, really good. So I will be grabbing butter tonight. And I know that they're not going to be running out of it. So that'll be good. Last time uh, Smith's had a sale, they had grapes for 99 cents a pound. And I went on a Tuesday night because the store's new sale start on Wednesday and all the grapes were gone. And I was like, dang, nabbit. I should have got my tushy there sooner. So, so Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a bummer. I really wanted to get grapes. We love grapes. We love snacking on frozen grapes, and I wanted to get them in our freezer. And that didn't happen. So you want to look at the ads very, very carefully. There's one where, like, sometimes they'll say, okay, I have them on my computer. They'll do these gimmicks, and I'm actually making a video on a, the gimmicks. Um, make sure you read. They'll say very interesting things where you think you're getting a deal, but you're not. They're wording. It's how they word it. This is such a gimmick. It's how they word it. Let me pull it up for you. Like, what have you noticed? Leave in the comics, comments. What have you noticed your stores do as a gimmick that you've caught on to? And then they kind of make you think like you're not going to notice. I noticed that there's one store in my area. The, they will, if they're having a good sale on a few things, they'll make their normal price tag look like a sales tag. They'll have it the same colors, like the yellow and the red. And so when you're just going down the aisle, your eye spots it. And so you're going to grab it and throw it in your cart. Uh, and it's not on sale. Like if you lift the tab up, you're going to see the same exact price underneath yeah, so they'll even do that, you guys. They'll make a new tag on something and make it look like a sale, and it's not. Um, they'll say final cost when you buy three. Uh, maybe you don't want three of that thing. Are you really going to be saving if you're buying three of that one item? Um, they'll do things like, 
oh, this one right here. Save $2 each when you buy three or more. Mix or match. So you can mix and match things, which is good because if you didn't need so much of something, so save $2 each when you buy three. So you're going to need to do the math and then you're going to be doing what? Comparing in your price book and you're going to see, is that really a deal? Now, I know a lot of people are like, oh, that's so much work. And the reason why I know this is because I have actually done uh, these classes here at our home. And the last two times I did these classes, a lot of people are like, it's just a lot of work and I work and it's just, it takes up so much time. And I'm like, can you afford it? Like, do you have money? Just do you got money that you could just blow? I don't, I am, I am checking these prices. This is where you could save so much. And um, they are blown away when I give them the tips and then they go put it in action. And then I get texts. I get texts with pictures of their receipts and what they did. And I get so excited. I always tell them after each class, like, I want to see pictures. So when you do and start applying these tips and you're noticing some like awesome deals that you're, you've got awesome savings, will you please take a picture? You can uh, message it to me on Facebook. You can message it to me on Instagram. I want to see because it's so exciting when you get and you start catching on to this. It's worth the time. All right. The last mistake to avoid is being store or brand loyal. This will trip you up every time being uh, store loyal. Like I know people, they will only shop at Harmon's. Now Harmon's, that's a beautiful store. Like, are you kidding? Beautiful. I know when during the holidays, when my local other stores always run out of like basil and parsley and not parsley, like basil, rosemary, thyme, like the fresh twigs, like during Thanksgiving, like, gosh, they just gobble up close to Thanksgiving and I can't get them so we could shove them in our turkey. I know that Harmon's will have them. Like they never... I've never gone to Harmon's and have them run out. They always have it. I will go to Harmon's just so I don't have the headache. And I will walk in, grab that thing and walk out because their sales are nothing in my area. They're nothing for me to like, woohoo, got to go to Harmon's. Never have. If I want to make a really nice charcuterie board, I will go to Harmon's and look at or get online and see their prices for like their cheeses. Mm -hmm. Their array of cheeses is un believable. And they're so good. And uh, I know that they're personally shopped for. I had a friend who was a manager of Harmon's and he would go and be flown to Italy uh, to pick out cheeses. And so I know like they, they're literally handpicked. They are so good. But I noticed that on some of the cheeses, um, I can go to Smith's and actually pick up some really good deals at Smith's. So if you're you know, going for the expensive items that you don't buy all the time. There are, are, are you wanting quality? Are you wanting price? Um, at Smith's, I will actually go over to the clearance section. That's the other thing. Don't make the mistake of not going over to the clearance section of your grocery stores. I'll go over to the clearance section in the cheese area, like over by the, like the shredded cheese and the block cheeses. And they'll have a section on clearance for all their special, specialty cheeses. And that's where I can get the good creamy brie for literally half off. You need to use it soon. Um, that stuff doesn't last forever. But if you've got a party coming up and you really want to use these cheeses that are so expensive, go check out that clearance section because I have saved a lot because that cheese is expensive. Um, okay. Okay. Those were the 10 mistakes to avoid while grocery shopping. Now I'm going to go through your comments. I've gotten a little glimpses and these are good. Okay. So this is a very, very good tip from Karina. She said, I shopped the ads, checked my receipt, and the price was wrong. Friends, you really need to be vigilant. I have actually at a certain store... Uh, let's just say it's all over America. 
and uh, starts with a W. And uh, <laughs> I've actually gone shopping there and I heard these rumors and and it's not just there. I've, I've had friends that check this out like at their regular grocery stores. Uh, I was buying not a huge amount of things, but I had an array of things from like really expensive razors down to like a loaf of bread. I'm not sure how many, I had less than 20 items. So I tested it out that day. I actually took pictures of each item that I was buying. So that way, if the price was wrong at the register, I could be like, look, look, it's wrong. So that way they wouldn't just think I was like throwing out a price. So I took a picture of everything. And so I went through, well, I had to go through, they make you go through the self-checkout. There was like no human being at the register, which drives me crazy. Um, so I went through self-check and each item I rung up one at a time and I compared my loaf of bread. My loaf of bread was marked wrong. It was marked up by like 50 cents. But listen, at the end of the day, that 50 cents turns into a dollar, $2. Uh, so that was marked up. The razors that were already expensive, I had to buy a certain type of razor for my son, uh, for him when he was at basic training. He had to use a certain type and it was already expensive. It was already like, oh, I don't know, close to $20. And they marked it up by five bucks. And I bought two of those. They marked it up by five dollars already at that point they were taking from my pocket ten dollars and fifty cents i'm like are you kidding and so every time and that poor self checkout lady every time she had to come over and fix that price and i told her i'm like you might as well just stand by me because you know i'm gonna be like so yeah and it's a pain but if you notice when you get home that your prices aren't right on your receipt. I know it's a pain to go back into the store, but you know what? One, it holds the stores accountable. And two, it's just more money in your pocket. Just think of like what you could be using that money for, right? And I've noticed that they'll put additional charges of weird little charges onto your receipt that you're like, what is, what is this? Um, so, and then there is scams where if you're at self-checkout, um, something will already be swiped that you're not aware of on the screen. Um, and sometimes it's like uh, cards, um, like, what did I hear? Like store cards or game cards. And, and then so you come in and you start swiping and then you're paying for that person's card. So there's a lot of weird things happening. So keep an eye out. Um, okay. So Derek, have you noticed any questions from the start? I want to make sure that I, yeah, you missed a really big rule. I missed a really big rule. Don't take hungry kids and husbands shopping. Yes. Did you hear him? Don't take hungry kids and husbands shopping. I agree. I believe that's from uh, my life's a hoot. My life's a hoot. Oh, Steph. Yes. Yeah, seriously. And don't go when you're drugged up either. <laughs> I think you guys might've seen the video of when we went to Costco to get my prescription after I had a tooth thing done. I was out. I was out of it. And, uh, you to buy I bought a lot of things, but I also knew what things apparently Derek told me. I don't, I only remember little things about that trip, but he said, I still was on my game with prices. Still still bought on sale. I still bought on sale. I was like, yeah, no, no, we can get it over here. And he said, I even looked up on my phone. I was looking at store apps on my phone. I'm like, are you serious? I thought I was asleep the whole time in that store. Nope. So <laughs> see, it'll become such clockwork to you that when you're totally out of it, you'll still know what's a good deal and what to pass or grab. So yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm finding your questions. Derek, if you spot one, will you let me know? Uh, if you have a question, leave it in caps. Oh, I see. I don't know if she's still on, but Tara from Living on a Dime. She was here earlier. Hello. We got to see her this weekend. We did a, it started off as a road trip driving to Colorado and then we flew home. Uh, but 
we had some things to do in Colorado. So I got to see her and meet Jill. If you don't know their channel, go check them out. They're phenomenal. Tara is the best. She's the best. So we had a good time. We actually stayed at the same hotel. So we went out to dinner and then had breakfast at the hotel. It was so fun. And meeting Jill was fantastic. I've been following them since I discovered what YouTube was. Like, really? Like, oh my gosh. So I see all of you on YouTube and Facebook. Hello. Any advice on freezing milk? Oh, yes. They came out like the different colors. Yeah, it's... Okay, even though I say you could freeze milk, it is a really a test on how to do it. Uh, we've done it like once, but honestly, we go through milk so fast that, and I don't have the space, um, but the best thing to do is to take a good fourth a cup or a half a cup out to leave room for expansion um, or else it could explode on you. So um, I'm not sure why it changed colors, you might have to Google that for us. That's just something I don't freeze all the time. I just don't. Um, oh my goodness. Michelle says homemade is the best. Yes, it is. And I'm learning how to do a lot of things homemade because frankly, I'm sick of buying things. I'm sick of it. And I love to cook and I love to learn to cook. So I have been learning a ton and um, some yummy recipes that I'm going to be sharing with you. And a lot of them are going to be in my cookbook. So we are working on a cookbook. Couldn't give you a day yet. Could not. But uh, the cookbook is so fun. There's bits of like old-fashioned ways of doing things, tips, um, yummy recipes, yummy. There's a lot of family recipes in this cookbook. And there's ways to build upon your recipe in the cookbook. So I'm super excited working on that. Does, uh, does Utah make you pay for bags? Does Utah make us pay for bags? Not yet. I haven't run into a store yet. We did in Colorado. Yeah, we did in Colorado when we were there. Um, we stopped at the family dollar to pick up some fake flowers to put on some family grave sites and they wanted 10 cents a bag. And we were like, we're fine. Thanks. My life's to do is still waiting on aprons. I know. We've been looking at companies. We've been looking at fabric. I know. Okay, Derek said, uh, Steph said, we're waiting on aprons. I know. I know. I know. Ooh, plastic and paper bags are banned in New Jersey from Donna. Donna said that? Yeah. That plastic, plastic bags, bags are banned in New Jersey are banned in New Jersey. Wow. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I get it. Um, okay. Family handshake. Do you do shelf cooking months? Oh, okay. So family, I don't know if you guys can hear Derek. Family Handshake says, do I do shelf cooking months? Is that it? Yep. Like what Jordan does, shelf cooking? Yep. I do that on a daily basis, guys. That's how I live. I am eating here. If you're talking about no shop, no spend, I don't participate in like no spend months. I don't. Because to keep up my rotating pantry, I'm going to take advantage of sales. These are items that go to my go-to recipes. So I'm tracking like what my go-to recipes are. I know what items we use. So when they're on sale, I make sure we have enough. So if I'm going to make it twice a month or three times a month, I have those on hand in order to do that. Um, so my whole life is basically shelf cooking. I shop my shelves, make my mails with my go-to recipe, um, and nothing goes to waste. Um, so I'm constantly doing it. <laughs> um, okay. So Terry says, Kimmy, do you only look at the front page of the grocery ads? No, I look at the whole thing, but the major like deals are on the side, on the front. Um, sometimes in the back, it just depends on what store it is. They'll do like organic stuff will be on the back of the flyer. Um, so you could look and see what's going on for organic. 
Um, but sometimes I'll notice that there'll be something in the middle that's like not too bad. Like, um, okay, here's a good example. There's here Miracle Whip and uh, Mayo. This is the time of year where they're going, you're going to see the Mayo Wars, okay? You're going to see the Mayo Wars. So right now you can get um, the 32 ounce Miracle Whip and Best Foods Real Mayonnaise. If you're on the East Coast, that's Hellman's. Um, for it's this store, Smith's, it, their normal price is $4.99. And they're saying that with your store card, so if you punch in your store, your phone number usually, um, you could save a dollar and it makes it $3.99 each. Um, that is actually very good, like very good. In fact, if the miracle is the same size, the 32 ounce that beats out Sam's club and Sam's club is the number one place I go to for my miracle whip. I mentioned it on my latest Sam's club video and you, when there's no sale, it's usually always Sam's club that beats out every grocery store for the base price. And that's where I get it. So seeing this for $3.99, that's, that's good. Will it go lower? It's so hard to tell you guys now with inflation. It's so hard to tell. I, If it goes down, it's going to be like in the 370s. Um, and that's where you go where, you remember that line I talk about? Like, where's that line? Um and so three, so four dollars, that is good. Um, in fact, the closer you get to Memorial Day, though, uh, there might actually be a better sale because last year, this isn't even their Memorial Day sale. OK, um, I bet. Yeah, next week, not not this coming week, next week, we're going to see the sale prices. Uh, it, it's a tough call if I would hold off on that one if you don't need it. But I might actually pass this sale because that Memorial Day uh, sale is coming up and um, it probably could save maybe 25 cents a bottle. So, yeah, it's it's a gamble. It's a gamble. It's like, oh, it's like you're at Vegas. Um, Danny J says she loves your price. Oh, Danny J. OK, Derek says that uh, Danny J says that she loves the price book. Yay. Okay, guys, Mother Day sale, 25% off the grocery price book right now. Um, so excited for you guys to have this. You will save so, so much money. Um, I'm super excited for you to start tracking your prices. I love the layout. The paper is butter, just like our planners. Over 36 or 37 categories we have in here. A ton. So just to give you an idea, we've got produce fruit produce vegetables butter and eggs and i was like i kept changing the wording and which category because of how i would track things on my own i'm like no 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 we need butter and cheese together not just wrapped in dairy and have this big dairy section where you're like searching through your dairy section and flipping pages trying to find i wanted everything quick for you like super quick so we've got a section on butter and eggs because that's a small section. And then cheese. Cheese needed its own section, especially if you're a cheese lover like we are. Right? It needed its own section. Milk and creams, yogurt and pudding, pork, poultry, beef, seafood, deli, bakery, breads and grains, gluten-free, grains and pasta, uh, so it's like, yes, you could grains and pasta and breads and grains. I gave you some options there, right? Uh, breakfast, canned fruit, canned veggies. Cause the canned section is huge. I mean, just to have a section on canned goods. Are you kidding? Then you're like searching and searching and searching. So I sub categorize that maybe it's the ADHD in me. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm like, I'm all about quick, efficient, Let's find these things quick. Canned beans, canned tomatoes, canned soups, condiments. Now, this is where I did have to tame it down because you can go bananas and condiments. You could just have a whole like pickle section. You could have a whole barbecue section. 
if I could have made the book like that, I probably would have because sometimes I'm that anal. So condiments in general, sauces and oil, spices and herbs, baking. In fact, I made the baking page section two whole pages, like two flip pages. Um, baked goods. Chips, snacks, and candy are all in one. Crackers and cookies. Then you have beverages, a coffee and tea, slash wine and spirits. Frozen produce, frozen dessert, frozen convenience foods. You have a section for bulk items, cleaning supplies, paper goods, hygiene and personal care, baby and pet supplies, and a few blank pages to make your own category. Ah, this thing is fantastic. Take it to the store with you if you want, or leave it at home on your desk or in your planner. It fits in the pocket in the back of your She's in Her Apron planner, which the yearly is 25% off right now. Stick it in the back of that. You could put your receipts with it and you could track later, you, you know, so you could do it in the moment or do it later. But if you're tracking what you always buy, your go, go, go to items, you're going to save hundreds and then during the year, thousands of dollars on your grocery budget. Oh, it's going to feel so good. It's going to feel so good. Um, oh, thank you, Wanda. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Thank you. That does help, actually. So thank you. Um, Any uh, tips on the best way to get started for folks with limited storage space? Oh, is that from, I know I'm going to butcher it. It's not Helen or Helene. Helen? No, it has an E at the end. Oh my gosh. So Miss Lindsay wants to know the best way to get started for folks with limited storage space. So many shopping options. Okay. What did I say? You said so many. Oh, and not many shopping options. Okay. Yeah. This, this, this could be a tough one. The biggest thing is not to store in your garage. I know a lot of people think, well, we'll just store in our garage. One, if you're prone to pets or pests, that that's a no bueno. You got to think of like your rodent issue. Um, we don't get mice in the house. I've never had an issue with mice getting into any of my. I know, I know, I know. I haven't had an issue. Um, bugs, if you're nervous about that, you can freeze your flowers before you use them. Um, but the best way to get started with limited storage space is you need to think outside the box. I tell this to everybody. Okay. So if you don't, I mean, we were blessed every pantry we've been in, except for our first two homes, we've been blessed with a decent sized pantry. This is holy moly. This is the biggest we've ever had. Um, so you want to think of your vertical space. Can you go vertical? Could you, um, I've actually had a viewer tell me that they, their formal dining room, they stopped using as a dining room. They never used it. Um, they put shelves in there and made that a storage room. Um, and they blocked off one half. I'm not sure how they did it, but, um, she said that she used that for storing. Um, so if you've, got a nice dining room that you don't want to use in that way. Um, you can use bins. I actually did a video on a one month bucket. Uh, you can use a Rubbermaid bucket. You can use uh, a flat bucket that can roll under a bed. Um, so you can stack buckets, think vertical. If you have a closet that doesn't do much for you, use that. Like we, um, our first home had a coat closet by the front door. And I was like, I needed more pantry space. I had like this small closet pantry and I was like, I need more space. What are we going to do? So we decided that that closet didn't like they could bring their coats and there was just me, Derek, Shaley, no, Derek and I and Callie, our oldest. And then Jonah was just a baby in that house. So coats didn't need to go there. Like it just ended up being like the catch all. You just throw it in there. You know, it was just a skinny thing. We took it out. We put shelves in and made that a pantry. You just gotta pay Tetris. Yeah, you do. You have to pay Tetris, but also look at your closets in your home. Sometimes you'll have that one shelf and then you've got a ton of space until you hit the ceiling. 
Could you add more shelves in there? Could you add more up? So look at your vertical space, look down um, lower. Like, do you have room under your beds? Can you use um, bins that can slide and that you could just pull out? Um, it may sound a little strange or extreme, but like I said, like, what have we seen the last three years? It's been crazy. And it's good to have food on hand. The biggest thing I have seen from people uh, with their food storage that they had put these tips into place was that I will get emails and messages about a husband losing a job or them losing a job. And one lady, her husband didn't get a job for, I, th there's two ladies, one lady, seven months. And then her husband, there was another one, three months and having built up their food storage, building up their pantry, they were fine. They were able to live off that. And that is probably the number one thing you want for, you're going to lose a job more than um, all of a sudden there's nothing on the shelves at, at the store. One question I got asked a ton during the pandemic was, did you shop a lot? Did you go out like when they shut it down for a while? Did you go out in like stock? Nope. The only thing we purchased was um, yeast because we were doing our own baking more. So I bought yeast, put it in my freezer. And then we did buy from, at the time, Patriot Supply, we bought uh, freeze-dried um, chicken and beef. And that started us down the road more to freeze-dried food. After using it and tasting it, we're like, this is incredible. And it lasts 25 to 30 years. And so we started going in that direction. And that's when we invested in a freeze-dryer of our own. Um and yeah, so please consider in having something on hand. Okay, Cindy asks, do you shop as their standard? I have looked into them and I'm intrigued by them. Super, super intrigued. Uh, I haven't purchased from them yet. Um, if you, any of you use them, let me know what you think. Um, but they have been on my radar. They have been. Um, and also, is it Misfits? Miss? Oh, my friend actually did an order from there and she gave me, she sent me a picture because I was going to do a price comparison and I haven't done it yet. So she took a picture of her order, how much she paid for it. So I, I wanted to do a price thing. It's called Misfits or something like that. So Jim and Teresa love Azure, Azure, I could never say it. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to check them out. I do. Um, but I have so many things here in my area to take advantage of. Um, there's a, a place called Alpine Food Storage, and they get tons of like local farmer produ produce that sometimes actually beat out the grocery store. So we like to go and purchase from them, chop them, freeze them, freeze dry them. So yes, in, yes, farmer markets. Derek mentioned farmers markets. During the fall, like summer, fall, there is one that we go down to down south from us. That is so worth going. We stock up uh, there with their peaches, their tomatoes, the jalapenos, um, the squashes. I buy squash there in September, October, well, October. And we just used up the last of that squash. If you keep it in a nice, cool, dark place, your squash is going to last. So, um, yeah. So we just used up the last of the squash. Um Yes, you could can that food, uh, freeze that food. So definitely take advantage. Um, I'll thank you, Juden Berries. She watched the one month food bin video. I'll definitely link that after this for you guys so you can see it. Ooh, okay. So Danny J says, I pulled out my wire shelves and put in industrial shelving that holds 600 pounds a shelf. I could fit so much more in the same amount of space. Also use my closets for different items too. Yeah, it's like, we're you know, all our space in our home is so important. Like, how do you want to use it, you know? Um, gosh, if like in our first house, we had a 
a third bathroom. We only used the toilet. And we never showered in that one. And we started using... Third bathroom, and it was such a small place. Yeah, I know. That 1,500 square foot house, the way it was laid out was awesome. It, felt, it did not feel 1,500 square feet. Um, but it had a third shower that we didn't use. So we had a curtain there. And uh, we stored in the shower. And just... In fact, I think that's how, I think I did break my nose because you remember when that shower curtain came down on my nose? Yeah, yeah. And so I was, I've been looking at my nose lately and I'm like, I think it did something to my nose when that shower curtain came down. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Um, okay. I'm looking for your questions. Okay. So Rosemary in Nebraska says that, uh, we have two ninety nine a pound butter at Baker's. It's a Kroger affiliate. Uh, this is good for a regular supermarket. Yes, uh, yes. But at Sam's Club, the pack of four one pound packages of butter is eleven. Yes, it's been going down. Uh, my Sam's Club is ten something right now. I actually have a picture on my phone because if I don't have my price book on me, I go and take a picture, come home, and then add it in. It's faster for me just to snap a picture. So if you are, live in Utah and you, you ever see me at the grocery store ever, like I'm constantly like, huh, Derek, I'll be walking with him through and I'm like, I won't even miss a beat, huh? Constant. I, I constant. Click. Click. <laughs> hey, you know, I could have worse addictions than keeping track of store prices, really. I mean, it could be worse. Um how long does American cheese last in the refrigerator? Well, if it's the kind that's got the paper around it individually, that'll last you forever. That is never going bad because there's probably 1% real cheese in it. Uh, so you're fine. Um, but like if it's real cheese, um, you could get mold on cheese, you guys, and you could cut the mold off and you're fine. Cheese is mold. We do it all the time. We just cut that portion off, throw it away and continue moving forward. Um, smell it, taste it. But if it has mold on the outside, just cut it off. Like seriously, you're fine. You can get a vacuum sealed machine and vacuum it up and store it in your fridge that way. If like, if you're going to buy the big block cheese, cut it into sections, food saver it up. You could freeze it. Uh, uh, you can, if you, if you're going to freeze it though, I would shred it before you freeze it. I would, because when you, unless you're going to use it in a recipe that's shredded anyway, because it's going to crumble on you, you couldn't like thaw it out, slice it. It'll just crumble. So, um, but if you're just going to use it, shred it in a recipe anyway, you could use, keep it as a block. But if you want to shred it and put it in the freezer for it to not just be a block of just shredded cheese. Uh, you could add some cornstarch or some flour, sprinkle it in a bag, shake it up and freeze it. What got you laughing, Derek? I was reading the same question. Oh. Yeah, my dad used to cut the mold. And I grossed out, but now I do the same thing. <laughs> it's fine. I do notice that like cheeses like brie, like those nice soft gourmet cheeses though, um, the whole thing will taste no bueno. Throw that out. I eat a lot of brie. I love brie cheese, Hunter. Oh, I've got brie cheese right in me. Love it. I'll try all different kinds of brie cheese. Ooh, speaking of cheese, you want to know what is a good one? This one right here. Now, I don't know if it's only sold in Utah. I'm not sure. It's called Beehive Cheese, and this is called Sea Hive. Sea Hive. This is... So good. It's rubbed with sea salt and honey. Oh my gosh. It's like a, it's a cheddar and it is so good. Oh my gosh. I tried it at, um, I went to like a little gathering and my friend who does charcuterie boards for a business, she, um, did a charcuterie class and I love going to those. I always learn something new and 
you get to try like different cheeses and meats. Oh, it's so fun. She had this one there and I was like, what is this? And I fell in love with it. Now Costco actually sells this in a huge wedge. Um, but then I noticed that, oh, Yes. Uh, is someone yelling at me? Am I being yelled at? Um. Now I lost my thoughts. Um. Oh, so I was, I think either at Macy's or Winco had this, the smaller one, instead of buying the big one. It, it's so good. So if you see this at your store, go try it. It is so good. Oh my gosh. Sea salt and honey. I can't describe it to you. I just can't. You got to go try it. That is so good. I love cheese. <laughs> I eat cheese a lot. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Another Jill said that she changed her coat closet into a pantry. Yep. Best decision she's ever made. Right? Right. Think of your space. But temperature fluctuates too much in the garage. I wouldn't go there. Not one bit. Would you do a vegetable and fruit quick freeze tutorial? We could do a live on that. I'm looking for microphones because I really want to cook with you guys. Um, I do have a video on 40 foods that freeze well and then another video that's 25 more things that freeze well. Um, I have a video on freezing garden vegetables. Uh, I think I have a whole playlist. After this video, I got to link all that in um, for you. But it's easier than you think, for sure. Um, okay, Angie did the same thing. She changed her coat closet into a pantry. Yep, so smart. Um, let's see here. Have, has egg prices gone down in everyone's area? I, ours has, not like it used to be, but it has gone down. I use free, I use freeze dry food for longer term food. Yes, we use it for longer. Um, I'm starting to use it more now because I, I want to be able to incorporate it in and have everyone used to the taste. Um, yeah, just learn how to use it. So I've been diving into it more and this stuff's good. It's so good. Um, okay, this is a good one. Do you save more money buying meat from local farmers or finding sales in bulk stores? Very good question. Now, for us, we save more on buying our meat from a local farmer, from a local rancher. In bulk. In bulk, yes. Uh, gosh, I have a video about this. Again, I'll link it when it's over. Um, gosh, that video went up in September where we, I actually break down the price for you. It came to like two, two something a pound. Maybe like 240 a pound, 249 maybe. Gosh, you'll have to go watch that video uh, to see what it was. Um, so it's cheaper for us to get it raised by a local rancher and have it butchered and packaged by a local um, processing area. And we save way more money. That's why like <clears throat> in my recent Sam's Club video, I showed you the Chuck Roasts. And they were five something a pound. And I know that's high. Like, that's ridiculous. But I don't know what the normal price is. Because honestly, <clears throat> I track everything. Even diapers for you guys. But I have a hard time tracking meats. Because I don't even think about it. Because it's my freezer stocked with it. It's just something that I don't think about until we run out of an item. Uh, and then I got to start looking at prices. So that's why I was like, I know five, whatever it was, is ridiculous. But what is the base price right now that you guys are seeing? So we do find it for us that buying from a local rancher is, we save more money. Now, finding sales in 
bulk stores, you can find some really good deals at the bulk stores for meat, but you can also find really good deals at your local grocery stores as well. So I would say probably not the best way, but a really good tip to save on your meats is to go check the clearance section of your stores for that. Like you can find spiral hams or just shank hams, um, marked down sausages, turkeys, um, like ground turkey uh, for a good deal. They'll mark the prices down. Go swoop that up, prepare it correctly, either cook it up and then freeze it or prepare it for the freezer so you don't get freezer burnt, burnt and get it in your freezer to have for later. So go check out the clearance sections. Um, one store in my area, it's about a 20-ish minute drive for me, um, is Winco. They don't advertise their prices. They don't have flyers. You can't go online to see their deals or their like normal base prices. I have to go into Winco to catch their base prices. So I try to go to Winco twice a month and I'll snap my pictures and then add them to my price book. Um, but I've been noticing the last two months of me doing this that Winco it's not as great as it used to be on base prices. Like I'm shocked at some of their prices. Shocked, like way more than Walmart. It blows me away. So this is why you gotta be vigilant. This is why you cannot be store loyal because when you're thinking you're getting a good deal, oh, they're always low, they're always great. Nope. Um. Let's see. Okay, I'm scrolling. Um, the meat does take a lot of room in the freezer. Yes, the meat does take a lot of room in the freezer. But, okay, let's say you have ground beef. You can lay it flat. Like if you use Ziploc bags, you can lay it flat instead of in rolls. Like our butcher does it in rolls. So, of course, stacking the rolls that that's going to take a lot of space. In fact, all our ground beef fits into the bottom section of our deep freezer, uh, not deep freezer, our stand up freezer. Um, it takes the whole bottom yeah, drawer. it takes the whole bottom drawer and then another bin, because sometimes depending on how we split it, we could come out with like 80 pounds of ground beef. So if you can, you could divide it up into two pounds. Or you can divide it up into one pound. It depends on the size of your family. Before, on most of our recipes, before we were a two pound family. Meatloaf, we're still two pounds. Even though we're down from six people here to four, we're still a two pound meatloaf family. That stuff is so good. Are you kidding? Um, so you could take it in like by a pound, flatten it out in your freeze bag, you can even then take like a ruler or something and leave dividend marks. Um, and if you only wanted to use a section of it, you can leave dividend marks in there and it'll freeze like that. So all you have to do later is when you need it frozen, just kind of like crack the bag and pull that portion out. So, um, but yes, think of the space on how you want to freeze things. In fact, I found some awesome tools for the freezer on how to freeze your food that I'm trying out right now and that video is coming. They're the coolest things. They're so cool. I can't wait to share it with you. Um, let's see here. Oh, Katie girl says, um, I don't allow them to scan my groceries while I'm emptying the cart. They make mistakes all the time and you won't know until you get home. Wow. Are they patient with you when you do that? Like when it's a big order? Um, wow. How do you do that? Oh my gosh. Especially if you have a big, big, big order. Hello from Chicopee, Massachusetts. What? Chicopee. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have to say that growing up in high school, when we would do go to states for cheering competitions, we're like, we were impressed with Chicopee. Could never beat Chicopee. But holy cow, we were impressed with their cheering squad. 
And that's where I learned that there was a town in Massachusetts called Sandwich. Because we were like, are the cheerleaders saying sandwich? And it was so funny hearing them say sandwich in a cheer. Cracked me up. Um, Dark Lord Met. He oh. grows his own chicken feet. I, I want him to message me. I want to talk to him. Who is this? Down towards the bottom. Dark Lord Met. Okay, Derek, I don't know if you can hear him, but Dark Lord Minute, you mentioned that you make your own chicken feed. Will you email me at cheesingheartapron at gmail.com? Derek wants to chat with you. So. I want to start growing my own feed. He wants to grow his own feed for our chickens. So can you please email us? Derek would appreciate it. Um, okay, so Angie just popped in. She, she said, you look wonderful. Well, thanks. And she wants to know what I'm eating. Okay, you're going to have to re-watch this video because I share with you this yummy beehive sea salt and honey cheese that is phenomenal. It's so good. So good. Okay. Danny J says she loves the price book. Was that who I had mentioned before? Oh, my gosh. Jim and Teresa say our mayo was $7.59. <gasps> That's when you learn to make your own mayo. And that's what I've been learning right now. You need oil, which avocado oil is really good for, some salt, uh, an egg. You can even put Dijon mustard in it if you want. And whip that bad boy up. Oh my gosh. I won't ever pay that. Even if like hyperinflation hits, like the world's coming to an end and it's $7.59. No. How bad do you want that mayo? <laughs> oh my gosh. That is horrible. For like a normal 32 ounce or 30 ounce. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, um yeah, holy cow. Okay, I hope I didn't miss any questions from the top. I'm going back down to the bottom. Cindy Sandy loves your Christmas Italian cookie. Oh, uh, thank you, Cindy. Aren't those good? They're evil. Like just know, you already know during the holidays that you're going to pack on weight. But if you start making the Italian Christ Christmas cookies, just enjoy the holidays. You know, you're, there's a lot in there, but they are freaking delicious. They're so good. I just made some of those and sent them out to my son where he's stationed. He said that those went quick. The guys like them a lot. So I was like, sweet. Sarah Loggard's mayo is over $11. What? Now I can't find her comment to get it off my the screen. There we go. Okay, what, Derek? Mayo in Sarah Loggard's area is over $11. What? <laughs> What? Where's that? Like all the way down at the bottom? Somebody's paying over $11 for me. Oh my gosh. Okay, Jim, cookbook? Yes, we're working on it. I can't tell you when it's going to be available. Um, but we're working on it. It's a lot of work. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a lot of work. No, no, Pennsylvania. Okay. So Vicky says Aldi has organic white eggs for $1.89 a dozen. That's good. Wow. Uh, and $3.95 for organic brown eggs for one dozen in North Carolina. I love North Carolina. Such a joke. Oh. Do more for brown eggs. Just a joke. It is a joke. Um, oh my gosh. I love North Carolina. I love that you have Aldi's. We're going to be in North Carolina a couple, times. a couple of times this year, and I can't wait to go to Aldi. I can't wait. I was kind of hoping, hoping, I'm getting tired. I was hoping that Colorado had Aldi because I wanted to stop in during our trip, but no. What a bummer. Bummer, bummer, bummer. 
Okay, Danny J says, I got one fourth cow and it took almost my whole seven cubic feet chest freezer. Yeah, but it's so worth it, right? It's so worth it. You know, Mother's Day is Sunday and I would really like another freezer. <coughs> Mr. Toodles. What? Mother's Day is Sunday. It is? And I would like another freezer. I, I'm not asking for diamonds. I'm not asking, you know, for a car. I'm. Where are we gonna put another freezer? Oh, there's space. Where? He doubts me. He doubts me. I will have another freezer. <laughs> Maybe not for Mother's Day, but I will get my hands on another freezer. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, another joke, like seriously, another joke, another mistake is buying water bottles all the time, like plastic, buying water in bottles constantly. Use cups. I'm, holy cow, you, you, you'll blow through your budget on bottled water. You'll blow through your budget. What did you read, babe? Everybody's just telling me you know where it's going to go. That I know where it's going to go? The freezer? Yeah. I, I know where it's going. And I don't care if you like it or not. Adulting is asking for a freezer for Mother's Day. Isn't it so true? <laughs> Man. What I used to want and what I want now, it's so different. And I get excited over, like, Things I never thought I would get excited over. Um, it's nice that you would prefer a freezer over diamonds. Yes. I don't need diamonds. I don't need diamonds. Like, my wedding ring doesn't even fit my finger anymore, okay? Because my knuckle got bigger. So, and I hate that I can't wear my wedding ring. And we could try to resize it, but it, the band is so thin. I don't know how that works. So, um, it's put away safe. And so I obviously wanted a ring. So I was like, just get me something, but don't make it a real diamond. Don't spend the money. Like, just don't. Just why, why spend where you don't have to, right? Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. So dark. Oh, this is that guy. Dark. He sent you an email? He sent the email already. He sent the email, you guys. Awesome. Thank you. We're in cow country. The meat prices went up, but not by much compared to the other areas. That's good. Oh, But you know what? Depending on how they raise those cows, you're getting, like, the best quality meat, like, hands down. I, I notice a difference in taste when we run out of our ground beef, and I have to go to the store and buy it, like, it's greasier, uh, way greasier. And I know that it's not, it doesn't have anything else in it. I've heard of some scary stories about ground meat at the grocery store with pink slime and oh my gosh. I noticed the taste big time, big time. Um, oh, good tip from Miss Melrose 437. For me, I sometimes go to the local butcher because they offer family packs where you get certain predetermined amounts of meat cuts for a price package. Yes, like find where those are in your town. You could shop directly from them. They'll let you shop from them. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and usually get a better deal. And it always tastes so much better. Like seriously. And then like, They'll have pork too. Like you can get good deals on pork. Sometimes pork, like pork chops, depending on where you go, will beat out the price of chicken breasts. It's incredible. New England prices are still high, $5 a dozen. I am so, so sorry. Thank you. I'm, I definitely am not going to say your name. I'll butcher that. 
Thank you. I just love to learn. I like shopping. I like learning, um, trying new things, and I like sharing it. I'm not a professional at anything, but I will say I'm dang good at keeping track of prices. I will say that. Like, that has become so needed. So right now, Mother's Day sale on the No Before You Go grocery price book and over 36 categories to keep you on track. Uh, if you would like me to do a live uh, or a video where I go into detail, I can uh, on how I do this. Um, I had someone say they got one and they were like nervous to mark it up. And I was like, oh, girl, you better mark this up. OK, this is meant to be a tool. OK, you have your phones, you have your planners, you have your grocery ads. You need to track your prices. Uh, so 25% off right now. Uh, I'm going to keep the Mother's Day sale going for a little while. It could be a week. It could be two weeks. I'll keep you posted. But at least until Sunday or Monday, it's definitely on sale for 25% off. And then if you still love the annual and want to get the annual planner, I know a lot of women are still buying the She's in Her Apron annual planner. <coughs> even though they're missing a few months to use, uh, we are offering this at 25% off as well. So you can grab that as well. Okay. <clears throat> and you will, once you start tracking and are vigilant, you are going to know the gimmicks. You're going to know where you're saving. Uh, like I said, I have a video coming out about the store gimmicks because there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. Oh, uh, Steph, right? Jana's Roast. Jana used to have a, a channel here on YouTube, and now I can't even remember what her channel name was. Cooking with my kids, right? Wasn't that Jana's channel, Cooking with my kids? I really want to say that that is correct. Uh, and that's where I learned her roast. It's so good, you guys. It's so good. Take a roast, any type of roast. Uh, Chuck roast is the best with it. And you're going to use a brown gravy packet. Um, if you buy the big powder of it, it's three tablespoons, uh, buttermilk ranch dressing packet and zesty Italian dressing packet with a half cup of water. Oh, it's the best roast. It is so good. Isn't that the best? Mm, mm, mm. Maybe that's what I'll have on Sunday for my mother's day dinner. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, Sherry, she loves her semester planner. Appreciate them so much. Yay, I'm glad. So if you're just popping in and don't know what that is, it's basically the yearly planner, but divided into semesters. So you don't have to have a big, a big boy. So this one right now, you can get your May through August. They ship quick. So, um, grab yours so you can plan now schools like our schools are almost out in like what just a couple of weeks so you can plan the whole summer in here meal plan shop your shelves you could budget there's a whole budget section in there weekly spread oh my gosh you guys tons in here there's freezer inventory in here and so grab yours order you'll have it um but the yearly is 25 percent off have you heard of Mississippi pot roast? Yes. It's so good. Uh, I love turning that Mississippi roast into sliders. Oh, actually, I have a video on that as well. It's so good. It's so good. Karen's comment. Yeah. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Uh, I hear Derek like giggling over in the corner. So I'm like, what is he laughing at? You guys are cracking him up. Kimmy, the freezer is going on his side of the bed, isn't it? Yeah. That actually could work. Actually, it would work better on my side of the bed. Don't tempt me. You put it on my side of the bed. I'll put all the frozen snacks in. I know, right? He'll have all his frozen snacks in that thing. Oh, my gosh. The man loves frozen fruit. He will snack on frozen fruit, like strawberries, berries. They're just so good. Um... 
Oh, Anne, hello, beautiful. Oh my gosh. We need to do a collab again soon. That was so fun. It has been too long. I love getting to know so many creators on YouTube over the years. I've been doing, she's in her apron hat. It's 11 year anniversary in April. And you get to know so many amazing women, you guys. Oh my gosh. Yes, Anne, you're a doll. My gosh, and your hair. I love your hair. I love your hair. My hair is just straight and plain and, oh, I love your hair. <laughs> and you're a doll. Um, all right, I'm seeing if you guys have any more questions. I'm not seeing it. I know Derek's got to get to a lacrosse game here in 15 minutes. So can we go 15 more minutes? Yeah. Okay. We'll go till 7.30. So in 15 minutes. Okay. Um, cause we're going to get to a, a nephew's lacrosse game. So it is, I will say it's hard to sit through a lacrosse game and not like, it's weird not seeing Jonah out on the field. You know, he played lacrosse for how many years since he was eight, since he was eight. Since he was eight. So it's so weird. And this is the first fall without him playing. It's weird. It's hard when your kids grow up and they leave. <laughs> it's weird. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. So if you have any questions for me, um, we got 15 minutes. So, oh, Emily. Yes. I love Karina from Life's Little Things who I met through you. Yay. She is so awesome. Karina and I, Han Derek, we talk every day. We Marco Polo yep. every day. You're always hearing her voice <laughs> in this house. Uh, her husband, Jason, he's great. Like, oh my gosh, she is seriously the sweetest thing. She's so down to earth. She's fantastic. Yeah, we talk every day. She's awesome. Yay, I'm glad you like her channel. If you've never heard of Life's Little Things with a Z, go check her out. She's great. Especially if you do Weight Watchers, she shares a lot of great things with Weight Watchers, videos on that to help you. So she's phenomenal. And she always finds great things on her Sam's Club hauls. And then when I go to Sam's Club, I'm like, where? What? We don't have that. Good scores. Wow. Time zone is funny because it's pitch dark here in Connecticut. Yeah, the sun is starting to set. I mean, it's lighter. It's starting to set. I, it's still sunny. I mean, it's there's light still coming through. Um, now, if it was the winter, this would be pitch black. Um, let's see here. I might not go to the game. It's looking stormy. You're going to let a little rain stop you from going to the game? Well, no, the lightning. Oh, the lightning. Okay. Well, if there's lightning, yes, please don't go. I'd like to keep you. I'd like to keep him. Oh my gosh, you guys. Over the weekend, I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but follow me on Instagram. But uh, D Derek, randomly keep posting the links in this next 15 minutes. Yep. Oh, Karina's on. Karina's on. Hi, we were just talking about you. Were your ears ringing? Were they ringing or have you been on here? <laughs> I love you. She's fantastic. Um, we, like I said, we went away this weekend, this past weekend, and uh, had a little road trip, and then we flew home, which you're probably wondering, why would you start in a car and end in a plane? <laughs> we drove our son's car to Denver, so that was the spot that we had to take it to. Um, I don't know. What do you call it? A, a what? It's a POV, it's a shipping center. A shipping center. So it could be shipped to where our son is right now. He's in the army. So we had to drive his car out. And the whole time I'm like, no one hit us. Please don't let a rock hit his window. Like I was freaking out. I'm like, this, please don't let anything happen to his car. He like, he got it before we left and he misses his baby. And I was like, please, no one hit us. No rocks hit the window. And so that's how we saw Tara and Jill on our trip from living on a dime. 
So we had a meeting, Derek and I stopped in Fort Collins and we had a meeting and she had to go where my meeting was because she does business with them too. And so we got to see each other. So we spent the night there and we got to have breakfast. We stayed at the same hotel that night. I had the best burger. What was the name of that restaurant in Fort Collins? Oh, man. oh good, man. that burger place was so good. I had a bacon marmalade burger. I inhaled that thing. I, I didn't, I put it down once and then I was like, no, I picked it back up where it was nice and hot and the cheese was all melty. And I like down that thing. It was so good. It was so, so good. Jimmy. Yes. Uh, somebody wants to know where you buy your clothes here in Utah because she's in Utah. She wants to know. She loves your clothes. You love my clothes? Okay. I buy this money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my clothes. <laughs> I do get a lot of my clothes at Sam's Club and Costco. No joke. No joke. Um, this shirt, I want to say this t-shirt is JC Penny. This is Ross dress for less. You know, this is so cute. You guys. Okay. I love Ross. I'll go and peek in there. So they have this sweater. I can't dry it or it's gone forever. They, they had it longer, like in a bigger size, but longer, but I wanted it short. Oh my gosh. So this was from Ross. I love this green. Isn't that pretty? <gasps> and I just grabbed it like, when did I go out with the girls, Derek? That wasn't too long ago. Not last week, but the week before. So go check your Ross and see if it's there. Um, it was less than $10, I want to say. So go check out Ross. So I'll go peek in there. I go to Maurice's. I love Maurice's. Um, in fact, that's where I'll do most of my like retail, retail shopping is oh, my hair is like sticking out everywhere. I'm having a bad hair day, guys. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So the big ones are the bulk stores. No joke. If you watched the recent Sam's Club video, I admit on there that I tried, I had leggings on underneath that long shirt and I tried on a pair of pants over my leggings right there in the store. I'm like, I, you know, I'm going to go home and it's going to be one more thing I'm going to have to return because pants, not all sizes are, you know? And so I was like, uh-uh. And so I kind of just like glanced around and I was like, who cares? And I'm what? just to get an idea. Yeah, I didn't like them, so I didn't buy them. But yeah, bulk stores, Frost and Maurice's. That's where I get my clothes. I did recently, though, buy some beautiful dresses at um, a local dress store south from me called uh, My Sister's Closet. Oh, my gosh. These dresses were stunning. In fact, that's where I got my Easter dress, if you guys saw on Instagram. Um, oh, that dress is gorgeous. That's where I got that dress. I went a little bananas. Showed all my dresses to Karina, huh? <laughs> I was like... I went bananas, but I needed new dresses and I kind of went crazy. I hate, yes, Susan, I hate shopping for pants. Exactly. I hate it. So if I have to return them, I'm going to be highly annoyed. So I just put them on over my leggings. Is that dress place in Stanisburg? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so that, if you're in Utah, that, that, um, the dress store is in, um, Spanish Fork. So I was down there in the area and I peeked in and, but my body is weird. You guys, like the way my torso is, it's short. Um, so like I have to try on everything. Like when it comes to dresses, I have to try on, I have to, I can't just say, unless it's a full maxi dress. That's like got it's just straight down that it's fine. But like any dress that has, uh, a tie or a ribbon or like an elastic thing that goes around this way. I have to try it on because it doesn't sit right. Like it just, I don't know. I have a small torso. I don't know. I don't know why things fit me weird, but I still have to try on all dresses. 
my body is just shaped weird. And so I have to try them all on. So yeah, I wish I could just go online and shop dresses, but I can't. Um, let's see. My clothes are always adorable. Well, thank you, Tay. I am a hoodie girl though. Sweatpants and hoodies. Are you kidding? I can live in those all the live long day. All the live long day. In fact, there was a point, and I know if you've been following me for years, I've been on YouTube for what, 11 years now? And I have mentioned a lot in the vlogs. I used to do more vlog style back in the day. And if I had jeans on, if I put jeans on, my kids literally would perk up and go, where are you going? Or where are we going? Like, what's happening? Like, what's going on? Like, it, like I put on a formal gown or something and it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh my gosh. So now they're used to seeing me in jeans and it's not a big deal. But there is a time when mama was putting on jeans. Meant something was going on. Something big was happening. <laughs> is it? It must be because my sister loves her hoodie and her jeans. I'm not a big leggings girl. I'm not. Like... I own two pairs of leggings and sometimes I'll wear a long shirt over it. It just depends on the shirt. It depends on the time of the month. It depends if I ate a big meal the day before. It all depends, you know. Um, but I just, I don't gravitate toward the leggings. So, but jeans, oh my gosh. Or linen pants, like. I bought the cutest pants at Ross. Do you guys want to see them? They are so cute. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. I can't wait to wear them. Does anyone want to see them? They're so comfy. Derek, will you run in my pants basket and grab the orange pants? Orange pants? Yes, I know. I know. I know. They're so cute. Now, <clears throat> When I was at Ross, I was going to get a bunch of these linen pants. Like, linen pants are crazy at Ross right now. They're there. <clears throat> so, and I wasn't going to try them on because I really thought, like, looking at them and holding up, you know, and looking at the elastic and everything, I'm like, these should work, you know, and they're wide legs. So, I'm like, these should work. I probably don't have to try them on. And the store was closing in, like, 10 minutes. I'm like, mm, I hate returning clothes. I hate it. I'm like, no, I'm just going to run and try these on. Thank goodness I did because the, especially the one pair of pants, I thought for sure were going to fit me. And no, they just fit weird. And yeah, so it was a good thing I tried them on. But this one I tried on and I didn't think I was going to like it. I didn't think I was going to like them. But guys on, they are so cute. Look at these. Now, I know they're flowery, whatnot. Look at this. When they're on, so if you see this at Ross, just try them on. I thought for sure I wasn't going to like them. It has the elastic in the back, okay? And then it kind of goes into like a V in the front. I thought for sure I wasn't going to like these. Tried them on, and they are so comfy and cute. Oh, my gosh. So comfy and cute. So, of course, they get wrinkly. You're going to have to iron or steam steam them. But on, they're adorable. So, if you see those at Ross, just try them on. Because all the other ones I thought for sure would look good on me did not. But those did. So, and I don't have anything that color. So, I can't wear that color close to my face, though. Because then, like, my dark, I have, like, permanent darkness under my eyes. I'm always using concealer. It'll just make me look so. <laughs> ah, so yeah. So if you see them, try them on. <clears throat> yeah, Karina, they'll go with a lot of shirt colors. So, oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. Um, 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 um. <clears throat> I'm comfortable in jeans and a jacket. I'm always cold anyways. Yeah. Tay, I hear you. I'm always cold. Always cold. Right now, my feet are ice. And Shaylee did bring me out socks. Where did I put them? I was going to put on a pair of socks. They're like 
They were over here. Did I drop them? Because I asked her, can you bring me a pair of socks? Um, my feet are always like ice. <laughs> and so I like to tease Derek because he's like, don't touch me with those feet. <laughs> like, so what I do, I know this is too much information, but when we're cuddling a bird, I will tease him and like just to irk him, I will take my feet and I will put them on him. But I make a sound like I'm searing him, like I'm um, branding him. I go, <laughs> he just, get those off me. And I'm like, oh. But my feet are always cold. Oh, poor Karen. She's always hot. Uh, yeah. It's so fun talking with you ladies. It's so fun. Yeah, watch. Ross will sell out now, right? I know. But run, I mean, I grabbed this there and the pants there. I think the, these were the only two things clothing-wise I got. Yeah. No. Oh, no. That blue striped shirt, which you're going to see in an upcoming video. I don't think the video's released yet. Which video did I wear that shirt in? Oh, I recently filmed a video in that shirt. It is a white shirt with stripes. The sleeves fold and then have a button. Um button down shirt with a collar. I just filmed a video with it. Um, I'm not sure which video that is. It's coming out soon. That when you see that shirt in the video, that shirt is so soft. I don't know what material it is, but it is so soft. And Derek really liked that shirt. Um, when I wore it that day, he's like, that's a nice shirt. I'm like, Ross, Ross. So Three shirt, three items of clothing. That's all I bought when I was there. So, yep. But yeah, but give me a hoodie. Give me a, you know, sweatpants, sweatpants. Oh my gosh. Sweatpants. I did buy a pair of sweatpants at Sam's. I think I showed it on that haul too. Those were comfy. They're soft too. They're, they're soft. Oh my gosh. Where do I get all my aprons? Okay. All right, let me show you. Mm, 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 mm. <gasps> Becky's on? Yep. There, yeah, there she is. Hi, Becky. Becky's another good friend of mine. Love her. I know you guys watch her channel. Isn't she phenomenal? She's phenomenal and the sweetest thing. Oh my gosh, love her. Okay, so let me show you. This one, and I bought another one that I wore, I wore this one on Sunday's video. Have you seen Sunday's video? It's another cook with me, yummy pork loin. Uh, I wore this apron in it. This was Walmart, you guys, Walmart. Look how cute this apron is. Comes with a pocket um, and also adjusts, no ties, I hate tying. This was great. So this is Walmart, super cute. And then the one I wear, it's actually, in an upcoming video. It kind of looks like this, but it's cream. That was Walmart as well, but I don't like how it, um, how it's worn. It has like a hole here and you have to like tie a knot. I didn't notice that. I thought it was like this one. It's not, um, but it's super cute. So that was Walmart. Um, this one, love this one. Okay. We are working on aprons. I'm working with material, you guys. It's a thing. I'm picky. I want something like this that crosses over, like the French cut, the French style, or the Japanese style, it cuts over. Um, but this one is super heavy. So I love this one. But the material's too heavy for me. Like, I'm not going to manufacture this weight. I, I, It's just too heavy. So um, this one's a fun one, though. I do love wearing it. It washes up beautifully. That's the other thing. I keep testing material to see how well it washes up. Um, so I do love it. It's bad. I mean, because it's thick, it doesn't just lay right. Um, but I love 
I wear this one a lot in videos. I do love this one. This one I found at World Market in Park City. It was expensive, but I got it for investigating. So, um, but it's the material is too heavy. It can't be too heavy and it can't be too thin. I'm so picky. Um, okay, that was at World Market. Uh, this one, I love this one. Another crossover one. Uh, I do eventually have to like iron my aprons at some point because I don't like it like this where it clumps and then I could feel it on my back. Ugh. I don't remember where I got this one. Oh, wasn't online. I was at a store. Hmm. I'm not sure where I got this one, guys. It could have been at the Red Barn or Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure. I don't know, but I love this one. This is another crossover one. Love the crossover ones. I'm going to wreck my hair. All right. So this one I'd love too. This is fun. See, because you have to you have to iron them at some point because it just clumps and you could feel it. Like certain textures, I'm like, oh, driving me crazy. So, like I said, I don't know where I got this one, but I love this one. It's lighter than that one. It feels super good. So I do like the weight of this one. So yeah. I need to start like writing on the tags where I got them. All right. It's like I'm doing a fashion show for you guys. My gosh. All right. This one, I will leave a link for this one. I found this one at Kris Kringle Mart at Christmas time, obviously. And this booth had the cutest things. And I was gravitated right for the apron. This is not too far off of the material I'd like to get. Um, the weight of it. She told me where she got her material. Some country, I can't remember now for the life of me. Um, she, it, as soon as I put my hands in the pocket, she goes, we're making the pockets bigger. I'm like, good. Cause I was gonna tell you right off the bat, that pocket is too short. She's like, you know your aprons. I'm like, I live in them, I sleep in them. So I was like, yeah, you need like another inch. Of pocket so she's changing the pocket i'll leave a link after this um i'll start linking everything tonight i'm going to be up late tonight i gotta send stuff over to my editor so i'll be up all night um that's the back i love the coverage on this apron how it crosses can you i'm showing this good how it crosses a lot because my mom is like gimme can you please make sure that your apron covers my butt because i always wipe my hands on my butt I'm like you are so funny mom so it has to be wide enough like this for my ma. So she could, she wipes like this. <laughs> oh, I love her. Oh, I love her. So yeah, I found this at a boutique. Um, oh, and this is only a crumb of my aprons, you guys. Like a crumb. Um, I want to say... There's a couple in here that I got from, okay, it's stuck on there. I'll just move it like this so you can see it. Can you see this apron? I didn't get it from her website, but it's uh, Denise Jordan, the apron diva. She sells this one on her website, but I didn't order it from her website. I do have a couple from her website. Uh, so she sells aprons. So that's on there. But I got it at a different store. Um, some more gifts from you guys from years ago. I mean, I have more in the pantry behind the door. Like Yeah, enough to rip the hooks off the wall. It happens. It happens. It happens. This one, I think it came off me in a video. Oh, it's really stuck on there. It's another, it's not a cross apron. But what I like about this apron is that the 
top is adjustable. It doesn't tie. It doesn't, um, it has deep pockets. Like there's long strings. So basically, um, you could tighten, oh, sorry guys, you can tighten it through the length. So it's adjustable. If that makes sense. Anywho, um, I'm like, I'm undressing here. She's a little It's not that kind of show. Um, but I find them at boutiques. I find them at Walmart. I find them at Hobby Lobby. Um, every time I go to the Red Barn, I go down there and I look at the aprons. Anywhere there's an apron, I'm attracted. I'm like, I go and look at them. I feel them. Um, I'll try them on in the store if they're not packaged in a way that I could rip them open. <laughs> um, I'm all about the texture, the feel, and yeah. Where can I find aprons that tie in front? Okay. To tie an apron in front, the strings are, are, have to be long. It's, it's so hard, like, for me to tie an apron in the front. I've just recently started tying aprons in the front. So like that orange one, you could totally tie in the front because the apron strings are long. So I couldn't tell you where to go. Like you have to try them on um, to be able to tie them in front. The strings just have to be long enough to wrap around you to tie. So yeah, so fun. World Market is starting to carry aprons too. Yeah, that's where I got the um, full khaki colored wrap one, but I'm not a fan of it. It's really heavy material and it poofs out. Um, I love wearing it, but it's not my favorite. Like, and it was expensive. <laughs> I was doing homework on it and yeah. Yeah, so, okay. I'd rather try on aprons and pants. Yes, I have to agree with you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like to, to and, and and two, it's just all about comfort um, when tying an apron. It really is comfort. I for years aprons with that tie around the neck and oh, I hate it. I just oh. yeah, I have lots of aprons that tie around the neck and not a fan. Not a fan. Yeah. Oh, I'm missing. Now I see why I'm not sane. Well, what? 34 people living in his place. He's got 34 people living in his place? Yeah, that's oh, that's where the huge house, I'm seeing the comments, it must be a huge house. Oh my gosh. Wow. Everyone moved back home, 34 people in the house, nine sisters, eight brother-in-laws, roommate, little cousin, parents, three dogs, two cats, a bird. And his sister's 12 kids. Whoa, do you have a big house? <laughs> but that's great that you have the space for them. Are you kidding me? What a blessing. That really is a blessing. Holy cow. Wow. That truly is a blessing. Aw, oh, Megan. She's been watching for eight years. Wow. Thank you. Um, I don't own a single apron, says Emily. What? Need to get on the apron bandwagon. Yes, you do, my dear. Yes, you do. I am a messy eater. <laughs> I'm probably worse than the kids. And I'm a messy cook. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, Donna, thanks for joining me. I, oh my gosh, I love seeing you. I love seeing your comments. You know that. You know how much I love you. Love you, love you. Thanks for joining us. Um, Okay, he said, what? Some days it's a blessing. Other days we hide the weaponry. <laughs> oh my gosh. <clears throat> yeah. 
the 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 dyna the dynamics of family life. I get it. I get it. You know. Oh man. Um. So cute. I love reading the comments. So fun. I have not. Are you new to the channel? Because I don't recognize your name like in comments before. Are you new? Because I, I, I seem to catch on to people's names and things. So I don't know if you've ever commented on the vlogs because I've, I've not seen that. So welcome. Welcome to the channel if you're new. So seriously. Um, Emily, you only have to wear one. One time and you'll be hooked. It's true. It's true. Once I started wearing them, I couldn't stop. Could not stop. Love them. And it's like my biggest motivator. Like for me to get up and get moving and in routine, it's my apron. I am in them all the time. All the time. So between a good planner and an apron, this ADHD girl's like, yeah. So, all right, guys. Uh, Mother's Day sale. I'm going to end with this. You can get the annual planner. I know some of you still want the annual planner, even though it's May. You can get it for 25% off. And the Know Before You Grow Go grocery price book that is going to save your hiney and save thousands. I'm telling you, track your prices. Um, this will ship out quick to you. So this is 25% off as well. Go and snag this. Um, and yeah, 25% off both Mother's Day sale. It'll go to Monday. I might extend it longer. I don't know, but go snag it, okay? Uh, I do want to spoil this, you guys this month. Oh, and if you follow me on, I probably will promote it on Facebook and um, Instagram. At some point, there could be giveaways. I'm not sure when I'm going to do it. So follow me on Instagram. I share more on Instagram. So snag your price book. Get going on tracking your regular prices. Become that shopping guru where sales tactics aren't going to snag you. You're not going to become a sucker. You're going to save so much money. Track, track your prices, okay? I appreciate you guys so much. Oh, Trey, Kimmy, I started watching you the same year I started watching Jordan Page. She's phenomenal. She's phenomenal. She's the best. I'm actually going to see her next week. We're going on a little trip. She's the best. Sweet gal. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I want, the goal is I want to go live once a week. Um, I know Fridays, I might be able to with my assistant can do it on Fridays if we did it during the day. Um, maybe after this video, will you leave a com hop back on, leave a comment um, in case I don't see it here. Like YouTube tells me the best times to go live. They give you in the analytics like data. Sometimes they're right. Sometimes they're way wrong. Um, if evenings like this is better, I know a lot of you, obviously, from the poll that I did, you guys work. If during the day, uh, I know it's not going to work for everybody, but um, I need someone to moderate in, you know, um, so that's the big thing. So I want to do more. Uh, I want to talk more with you guys, talk more in routines and other things. This is why I was like, should I start a podcast? I don't know. Um, but I want to talk more than just groceries with you guys. Like, uh, I want to get to know you and talk more. This was so fun after the tips, just chatting with you and showing you my clothes and aprons, eating cheese from the refrigerator drawer. <laughs> I'm obviously hungry. I haven't eaten dinner yet. My dinner's right there and I am hungry. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I appreciate you all so, so much. Happy Mother's Day. There will be a video on Thursday, but I just wanted to say happy, happy Mother's Day. And um, I hope you guys enjoy your day. Put your feet up, let them scream, let them cry, let them starve. <laughs> Enjoy your day. Find a moment for you. Okay. Love and appreciate you.
Happy Mother's Day, and I will see you Thursday for Thursday's video. Thanks for joining me. Bye.